Hello class, uh, today we are going to do Unit 6, Lesson 2, uh, 6.2 uh, Radian Measure and Angles on the Cartesian Plane. Okay, so what you should notice about uh, today's lesson is that it's basically all the same steps that we did uh, last year in Grade 11 um, with trigonometry, uh, but instead of using degrees, now we're just getting ourselves used to using radians. So, like I said, the steps and process is, uh, should all be very familiar to you. Okay. Uh, so, let's review a bit uh, about trig ratios of any angles in the Cartesian plane. So, remember we always imagine that there's some point x, y um, that's at the end of the terminal arm of an angle in standard position. And as we move that terminal arm around, we say that it uh, rotates and creates a circle, a unit circle. Um, and sometimes we say unit circle with radius one. But anyway, you can see as it goes around, uh, for example, this point here is x, y. Over here, it would be mirrored by the point um, negative x, positive y. Down here, negative x, negative y. And down here, positive x, negative y. Uh, so typically, if I give you the point, then you will know your x and y. And then you have to solve for the radius here in order for it to create that little triangle. So every angle always creates use a highlighter here, um, a little right triangle with the nearest x-axis. Uh, in order to find the radius, let's remember that the radius is found by um, rearranging Pythagorean theorem because it's a right triangle. So r is always equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. Okay, so you always have your x, your y, and your r. All right, so um, sine theta in that case um, is always opposite over hypotenuse. So opposite over hypotenuse, so that is y over r. Uh, cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, so it's always going to be um, the flip of it. So cosecant is going to be hypotenuse um, over opposite. Okay. So it's 1 over sine, which is hypotenuse over opposite, and therefore it's the flip of this, so radius over y. Cos theta. If we go to this angle here, we know it's always uh, adjacent over hypotenuse, so that's going to be x over r. Uh, its uh, reciprocal is secant theta, so secant theta is 1 over cos theta, which means it's hypotenuse over adjacent, so r over x. Tan theta is opposite over adjacent, so that's always the y of the triangle over the x of the triangle. So y over x, and then its reciprocal cotangent is going to be the flip of that, which will be adjacent over opposite, so x over y. So uh, let's kind of review uh, the primary and reciprocal trig ratios for special triangles. Uh, so remember, these have exact values. So when I ask for something in an exact value, that means no decimals, um, and you leave it in radical form. Okay, so if you get root 3, you leave it as root 3, you don't write it as a decimal. Um, also, proper form is that we always rationalize our denominators. So that means we don't leave any radicals uh, in the bottom. If we do, then we change, um, we have to modify it so that it looks better. So these are all familiar, what we've done before or dealt with before. It's just that we have to get into the mindset now um, that we're writing it in radians. So Everyone might remember this is everyone's favorite special triangle. Okay, so it's the one that has the two 45 degree angles, but now when we draw it, right, you're getting used to writing pi over four, pi over four, right? Because 45 degrees is pi over four radians. And this one always had side lengths one, one, and root two. All right, so if I ask you for sine pi over four, you're gonna draw your triangle at the side, and then you're gonna say, okay, I know it's opposite, over hypotenuse. So that's 1 over root 2. Uh, because it's bad form to leave the root 2 at the bottom, um, in order to get rid of it, we have to multiply it by itself. Uh, whatever you do to the bottom, you do to the top. So that means I do 1 times root 2, I get root 2. And then root 2 times root 2 is equal to 2. 
Cosecant pi over 4. Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. Um, so that means cosecant pi over 4 is the same thing as 1 over sine pi over 4. So that's going to be the flip of this original version. Okay, so the reason for this one, um, when I flip it, I'm going to the original version because when I flip it, the radical is going to be up top. So it's root 2 over 1, which is root 2. Okay, I don't uh, flip this one because then that would put me in the predicament where the root's at the bottom again. Uh, cos pi over 4, that's adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's always the same value as sine pi over 4. So that's 1 over root 2. Uh, which becomes root 2 over 2. Uh, secant pi over 4 is the same thing as the reciprocal of cos. Okay, so I'm just going to take 1 over root 2 and I'm flipping it to root 2 over 1. So just root 2. And tan pi over 4 is opposite over adjacent, so that's just 1 over 1. Okay, so tan pi over 4 is 1. And cotangent pi over 4 would also be the same thing then, because the reciprocal of 1 is 1. Okay, for uh, the second special triangle, that's the one that always involved the angles of 30 and 60, along with the 90. So please remember this at the side. It's very tricky to remember. Sometimes you see 30 degrees and you want to think pi over 3 because the 3s match and then the 60 with the 6. It's always the opposite, okay? So 30 is always pi over 6. Okay. And so that's always the one that's um, in this bottom corner here. Okay, so pi over 6 is down here. Uh, sorry, pi over 3 is down here. Um, and then we've got, so I'm going to highlight this here. And then our 60 is pi over 3. And that's going to be the one up top here. Um, so a little trick that I personally use to remember this is that I always think root 3 is opposite pi over 3. And then I always just remember the 1's here and then the 2 is the hypotenuse in order for Pythagorean theorem to work. So root 3 opposite pi over 3. Alright, so sine pi over 6, okay, that's going to be opposite over hypotenuse. Okay, so that'll be 1 over 2, which means its reciprocal is going to be... 2 over 1. Cos pi over 6 is adjacent over hypotenuse, so root 3 over 2, which means its reciprocal is 2 over root 3, and then we have to rationalize the denominator, multiply top and bottom by root 3, so we get 2 root 3 over 3. Tan pi over 6 is opposite over adjacent, that's 1 over root 3. We again rationalize the denominator, multiply top and bottom by root 3, so we get root 3 over 3. If we were to take the reciprocal of 1 over root 3, that would be root 3 over 1. So cotangent pi over 6 is root 3. All right, now pi over 3 will be our reference angle. So here, let me just kind of highlight here this one we used the blue. And now we're using the yellow. So um, sine pi over 3 is now opposite over hypotenuse, so root 3 over 2, which means cosecant of pi over 3 this, of pi over 3 is 2 over root 3. Multiply top and bottom by root 3, and we get 2 root 3 over 3. Cos pi over 3 is adjacent over hypotenuse, so that's 1 over 2. And that means secant pi over 3 is the reciprocal, 2 over 1, so 2. Tan pi over 3 um, is opposite over adjacent, so that's root 3 over 1. And that means its reciprocal is going to be 1 over root 3. Multiply top bond by root 3 to rationalize, and we get root 3 over 3. Okay. So again, these are things that we should be comfortable doing from last year, uh, just getting used to recognizing um, these measures and radians. 
Uh, before we move on to finding exact values of trig ratios, uh, let's just keep in mind the cast rule. So remember the cast rule starts in quadrant four uh, with the C and then it goes around in the counterclockwise direction. So C A S T. So it states where uh, each trig ratio is positive. So cos here, all here, sine here, and tan here. Okay, if the name doesn't appear there, then it's negative. All right, so we're going to determine the exact value of a trig ratio. Okay, so that means um, exact value. Um, that means uh, you cannot use decimals. So as we fill this in, I want us to go through an example here at the bottom, okay, step by step. So determine the exact value of our first trig ratio is sine 5 pi over 4. So I know we're still getting used to drawing these angles. So step one is that for now I usually um, have you determine what the principal angle is in degrees just so that you can draw a good sketch of it and visualize it. So remember to convert to degrees if it's given in radians you multiply by uh, 180 over pi. So theta here is 5 pi over 4. Okay, so 5 pi over 4 times 180 over pi is 225. Or I want you to start thinking to yourself, it's five sets of pi over 4. Okay, so think, okay, five sets of 45 degrees. Step two, I want you to sketch the angle in standard position. Okay, so we're going to do that. If it's five sets of pi over four and it's 225, we know that this has to land in uh, quadrant three. Okay, so 225 is going to land here. Another way that you can draw this, I kind of want you guys starting to get used to the counting of this, is that I want you to think of five sets of pi over four. So just watch as I draw. So this would be one set, this would be two, this would be three, this would be four, and then notice this arm here would be the five or the fifth set of pi over four. So I'm just showing you two different ways you can draw it. Okay, you can count like I did in the green highlighter, or you can just convert to degrees and then visualize it that way. All right, so we've drawn it in here. Uh, step three is we need to determine the related acute angle that is formed with the nearest x-axis. Okay, and related acute angle we always refer to as beta. Okay, so I've drawn beta in here. It's this part here in purple. So how am I going to find beta? So I can find beta by knowing I traveled five pi over four, but then I need to subtract what this one full line is. And instead of saying subtract by 180, which is what we're used to, we're going to say and subtract by pi, because remember pi now represents 180. So beta is going to be um, the full angle, 5 pi over 4, minus um, this half, half of a circle, and that will leave us with the purple section. 5 pi over 4 minus pi, we find a common denominator, and we get that beta equals pi over 4. Because okay, you're going to do 5 pi minus 4 pi over 4, so pi over 4. Um, a little hint here is, and that's why I've highlighted it here in green, when you already see that the principal angle is 5 sets of pi over 4, that's already a hint to you that the related acute angle is going to be pi over 4. Okay, So if I had said 3 pi over 4, again, you would know the related acute angle was 1 set of pi over 4. Uh, step four, we are going to determine the special triangle that the related acute angle applies to, okay, if it does. Uh, so here, um, pi over four, that means I'm going to draw my related acute angle. Or sorry, I'm going to draw my related acute angle that appears in the special triangle. So that's the one with pi over four, pi over four, one, one, root two. I'm going to refer to this. Because basically, this is the triangle, let me draw in blue here, this triangle is basically sitting in here. 
with the right triangle there. So it's kind of like I'm moving this guy, I'm flipping this guy upside down, and this triangle is being imported into here. Okay, so every angle makes a little right triangle with the nearest x-axis. Okay, so that's it inside. So what we need to figure out, okay, our next step, okay, is we need to determine the exact value of the ratio using the special triangle and the related acute angle. So remember, that means I'm just looking for what is sine of the related acute angle. Okay, that's what we care about right now. So sine of pi over 4, according to this special triangle, is 1 over root 2, okay, which um, when we rationalize the denominator is root 2 over 2. So sine of that is uh, root 2 over 2. The last step. While this is good information, um, the question did not ask us for what sine pi over 4 was. They asked what sine 5 pi over 4 is. But we need this as part of our answer. So the last thing that we have not determined, sorry about that, is the sign of it. So we know that the number is going to have this value, but we don't know if it's supposed to be positive or negative. And that's where your drawing comes into play. So we are going to use the casserole to determine the sign of the ratio based on where the terminal arm lands. So as you can see here, I have C, A, S, T all around and it lands in this quadrant where tan is positive. So that means sine is negative in quadrant three based on the cast rule. Okay, sine's negative in quadrant three. So therefore I can conclude that sine of five pi over four is going to equal negative root two over two. Okay, so you take these two components you take the sine from cast rule and you take the value of the ratio at its related acute angle to get the number value. And those two pieces make the answer. But you see how you needed all these steps to help you find it. So if you're getting used to it, um, a quick way to think about it is sine of some angle is always going to be equal to plus or minus, depending on the cast rule, and then that uh, ratio evaluated at the related acute angle okay. is essentially what we're doing. So sine cos tan of a principal angle is sine on cast rule times the ratio of the related acute. And these steps are repeated over and over again. Uh, so let's try another one. Uh, we have tan negative pi over 6. So here, the angle that we're working with, uh, I'm just going to label this um, theta with like a little negative up top because usually theta, um, by definition, is a positive angle. Um, so I'm just saying theta negative, meaning I know we're dealing with the negative version. Okay, so you're always looking at this angle here. All right, so it is equal to negative pi over six. Um, we should be recognizing that from the previous lesson, so that's negative 30 degrees. Okay. All right, let's draw a sketch of what that would look like. So because it's negative, it's going in the um, counterclockwise direction. So here in red, I've drawn uh, what the angle would look like. Okay. So this is, and again, I'll label this beta negative here, uh, negative pi over 6, which means beta is the little part inside here as well. So as you can see, we already know what beta is based on our drawing. Okay, We can see that if this is going negative pi over 6, um, beta is always the positive angle between the terminal arm and the x-axis. So beta is always positive, so beta is positive pi over 6. We also could have noticed this based on the principal angle. Uh, we could see were um, intervals of pi over 6 as well. All right, step four, we want to figure out what special triangle we're working with. And that's going to be obviously the one with pi over six in it, which looks like this. Uh, keep in mind that you can draw your triangle in the diagram if you'd like as well. Okay, so we can see our triangle in here. Okay, with the pi over three inside here and the pi over six. 
All right, so basically I just pull it out here so that's easier to see because sometimes the diagram can get a bit busy there. All right, so now we want to work with, we're working with tan. So we always care about what tan of beta is first. Okay, so tan of beta, remember beta is always positive. So tan of pi over 6 is going to be equal to opposite okay, over adjacent. So that's 1 over root 3. And then rationalize the denominator, that's root 3 over 3. So this is a good piece of information. And now the next thing I need to do is the cast rule. So because my angle lands in um, quadrant 4, and I know that only cos is positive there, that means tan of this angle will be negative. So tan theta um, is going to be negative in quadrant 4 based on the cast rule. So my final conclusion is that tan of uh, negative pi over 6, let me make that a bit easier to read for you, so tan of negative pi over 6, that's what they asked for, is equal to negative root 3 over 3. Okay, so again, negative from the cast rule, the root 3 over 3 from the ratio evaluated at the related Q. All right, and let's try some more. Now we have secant 5 pi over 3. Okay, so remember secant is the reciprocal of cos, so that will come into play in a bit. So step one is verifying what angle we're working with. Okay, so you can multiply um, by 180 over pi, or I want you to start thinking um, of this as five sets of pi over three. So five sets of 60, which is uh, 300. So 300 we know is going to land in quadrant 4. Okay, so it's going to go around here. And again, if you want to get used to the counting method, I'll show that again for those that are interested. If I wanted to count um, 5 sets of pi over 3, so that's 5 sets of 60, my first drawing would be 1, 2, 3, 4, and then five would land right where my drawing is, right? That would be the fifth set of 60. Okay, so beta is gonna be inside here, this little part here. So how do we find the value of beta? Well, we know this rotation here is five pi over three, and we know that beta is gonna be the difference from a full rotation to five pi over three. We know a full rotation is two pi. So that means we're going to have to do 2 pi minus 5 pi over 3. So 2 pi minus 5 pi over 3, you want to find a common denominator, multiply top and bottom by 3. So we get 6 pi minus 5 pi, so we get five, uh, sorry, pi over 3. Again, use my rule where you see uh, multiples of pi over 3 here. It's indicator that pi over 3 is the related acute angle. All right, we're going to draw our special triangle. Okay, so our special triangle works with pi over 3. Uh, now we want to see what secant of pi over 3 is. All right, you always care about secant of the related acute. So remember, this is going to be hypotenuse over adjacent of pi over 3. So hypotenuse over adjacent. Okay. So that's going to give us 2 over 1, so just 2. All right, um, now we have to think about the cast rule. So secant is the reciprocal of cos. So if we write out our cos, um, oh, sorry, our cast rule here. So C, A, S, T. Right here uh, is where the terminal arm lands. Um, and that's, this is where cos is positive. So if cos is positive here, then that means it's reciprocal secant is positive here as well. So secant is positive, or secant theta, sorry, is positive in quadrant four. So that means our final answer is that secant five pi over three is equal to positive two. 
So again, the positive here, you don't have to put the plus sign. If you want to, you can. And then the two number comes from here. Good, hopefully you guys are starting to see the pattern um, and it can just kind of be boring the same steps over and over again. Um, but every new question might have a little change to it. So just like this one through in the reciprocals. Uh, so just make sure you understand the steps and why you're doing them. And as you can see, the steps all help you lead to finding um, the ratio value here and the cast rule. All right, now we're going to go to a special case. Okay, um, special case angles are where the angles land on the actual axes. So for example, a 90 degree angle lands on an axis, it doesn't land within a quadrant. Uh, and the angle 180 and the angle 270. So that would be pi over 2, pi and 3 pi over 2. Right? And then obviously a 2 pi is a full rotation. So here we've got one of those, uh, cotangent of 3 pi over 2. So 3 pi over 2, if you remember, Okay, is 270 degrees. Okay. So when you draw that, it should look like this. Okay. So it should be this red um, rotation here. Okay, so the angle and then in red pointing down. So what's tricky about this is that the related acute angle, there isn't really an acute angle. Like it is 90 degrees from the x-axis but there's not like a beta value that we really solve for. Um, so in this case, I want you guys to think of your triangle. Okay, every angle makes a triangle, or you have X, Y, and R. But in this case here, it says if we had the triangle, okay, so it says we had it here, but then we squished it into a straight line. So I want you to imagine that we had a triangle, so follow my cursor here, and then we took this tip, brought it down until we created a squished triangle that made a line. So we pulled this down, squished it, and then basically this Y term no longer existed, this Y side. Okay, so if you think of it this way, if we brought that all the way down, that means Y came down to here. So if we drew this triangle, okay, so the triangle has been squished, if I asked you what the x value was for this triangle, what would you tell me? You would say that the x value hasn't deviated left or right. So that means the x value is zero, right? If I'm drawing down here, I haven't moved left or right. If I've come down here, it means that my y value is going down by negative one. We always work with units of one and one with the unit circle, okay? So we've gone down one, so we say y is negative one. Imagining this is a squished triangle, then we're going to say this triangle, we you know in quotations, um, has a radius of, and radius is always positive, okay? So radius always a positive value. Uh, if it went down by one unit, then the radius is one. So we are going to say then that cotangent of three pi over two, okay? We know cotangent is always adjacent over opposite, right? The flip of tan. And then this is where your letters are going to come into play. So x over y, that's going to be 0 over negative 1. Okay, so we get that cotangent 3 pi over 2 is 0. So I want you to practice a few of those in the homework. I want you to imagine the squished triangle. Okay. So for example, let me just add something up here. Um, so for example, if I have the angle going to 180, so if the angle is doing this, okay. so theta is pi. Then in this case here, your squish triangle is going to be this line right here in green. So we would say the x value for this squish triangle is, well, it looks like I've extended negative 1 outwards, right, to the left, so negative 1. My y would be uh, 0, okay, because I haven't, my triangle doesn't go up or down in any direction. 
okay? And my radius would always be one. And then you would do your sine, cos, and tan ratios based off that. Okay. All right, uh, now we're gonna move on to uh, the steps for evaluating uh, ratios for angles between zero and two pi. All right, so for this one, okay, uh, make sure that your calculator is in radian mode. Okay, very, very important here. So I want everyone to change their, re, uh, their mode right now because um, in test to make sure you're okay, uh, you should get that sine five pi over four is negative 0.7. Uh, okay, so if you're in proper radian mode, you should get this in highlighted, highlighted yellow. You're going to see if you're in degree mode, when you do sine 5 pi over 4, you're actually going to get a different answer. You're going to get 0 0.068. So that's why a lot of students on tests can sometimes get questions wrong just because they didn't have themselves in the right um, mode. Okay, so get to know your calculator and figure out how it can show rad at the top or an R. All right, I'm going to go through these steps um, as we go through the example down here. Okay. So it says, determine all possible values for the radian value uh, of theta if theta is between 0 and 2 pi. So in the last question, they gave us the ratio, they gave us the angle, and we had to find the value. Now we're going backwards. Now they're giving us the ratio, they're giving us um, the final value, but they're not telling us what angle that we took. So in this case here, step one. Use the sine of the ratio along with the cast rule to determine possible quadrants where the terminal arm could land in. There's always going to be two because there's always two places where something um, will be positive. So I notice here that um, sine theta equals positive one over root two. So it's positive. So sine theta is positive. So that tells me that theta lands in quadrants one or two based on the cast rule. Okay, so cast rule, we know um, A and S will be positive in quadrants one and two. We are going to sketch theta in each of the possible quadrants. And like I said, there should be two options. So let's do that sketch here if you want to have different colors out for this. Okay. So I drew my first possible one, theta one. Okay, I do a little subscript one, subscript two here. So first possible theta one is in quadrant one and make sure you're doing your drawings proper. And then in purple, I have uh, theta two, the other possibility. So both sine of both of these angles would give me a positive answer. Now, in order to find theta, I need to find beta. Okay, so I need to know what little gap is um, missing for both of these, and it's both the same value. Okay, so using the value of the ratio, ignoring the sign. Okay, so that means if um, the ratio at the side here was negative, you're going to ignore the negative. You always just deal with the positive. Okay, you're going to determine the related acute angle beta. Okay. All right, so we are going to find beta. So what I want you to do is take the original question you had, change theta with beta, because we're solving for that first, and then um, you're going to keep your ratio but make it positive. This one was already positive, so our work's already done. So sine beta equals 1 over root 2. Now to solve for beta, we're going to take the inverse. Okay, So you can do um, beta equals sine inverse of 1 over root 2 but you should be recognizing one over root two as being two sides of a special triangle. Okay, so these are the special triangles here. So it's the one with pi over four and pi over four. So sine of what angle equals one over root two? And then I think to myself, oh, sine pi over four equals one over root two. So I know beta is pi over four. All right, once we have beta, we're going to use the sketch and the related acute angle to determine the values of the two possible principal angles. So this is where our drawings are going to come into play. So if you have an angle in quadrant one, 
then theta is just going to be equal to beta, right? They're the same thing because they're both acute. If uh, theta lands in quadrant 2, then you're going to find theta by doing pi, which is 180, pi minus beta. If theta is in quadrant 3, you're going to do whatever the angle measure is, okay? So you're going to do pi plus beta because it goes past pi by that amount. And if it lands in quadrant four, it's going to be a full rotation. So it's going to be full rotation of two pi minus beta. So remember, all the same as last year, you're just replacing the degrees with radians. All right, so using that method here, I know it's either Q1, Q2. All right, so uh, let's start with our first one. So our first uh, theta one is basically just beta, okay, which is pi over four. So we're already done because that land in quadrant one. Now for our purple one, uh, it's in quadrant two. So I'm going to find that by doing pi minus beta. So that's going to give us pi minus pi over four. I want you to find a common denominator and you should get three pi over four as your second uh, theta. So right now in your calculator, if you type in sine pi over four, you should get one over root two. If you type in sine three pi over four, you should also get positive one over root two. And that's why there's always two answers because unless they tell you anything else, um, the domain here, they said zero to two pi. So that means you have to consider everything in four quadrants. And so your final answer should say theta is equal to pi over 4 or 3 pi over 4. Okay, and another way you can visualize it, if you want, you can visualize that this triangle is inside here. Okay, and those are how the kind of the triangles are made. Okay, uh, let's try this one. Uh, we've got tan theta equals negative 7 over 24. So this one here, the other question had values that we recognize from a special triangle. Negative 7 over 24 we know definitely is not in a special triangle. So that's why my value is going to have to be rounded. So we're going to have to use um, the calculator for sure for this one. And it says round to the nearest hundredth, so that's two decimal places. All right, the same uh, step supply. Your first step is to analyze the sign of the, the value here at the side. So it says tan theta is equal to a negative answer. So that means theta must land in, and then you have to think, what quadrants is tan negative in? Tan is negative in quadrants two and four. All right, so let's draw that out. So as you can see, tan is positive here and here. So if tan is negative, that means it has to be in quadrant two or quadrant four. So get out your colors, draw your first angle, again, all starting from the positive x-axis and then rotating into quadrant two, call that theta one and use another color to draw the other possible angle in quadrant four. Make sure you draw your arrows and label that theta two. Of course, we know they both have the same beta, so draw that in. And now our job is to find beta. So remember, that means you take the original expression, you change theta with beta, and you remove any negative signs. The negative sign is only important for where you draw it. So the negative sign just pertains to Castrol. Other than that, all we care about is this 7 over 24. So you're going to write tan beta is equal to positive 7 over 24. Beta is always a positive answer. So if you forget, um, or it's always a positive answer in between 0 and 90. So sometimes when you make a mistake, you might notice that you get something that's a different value, and then you'll know that something isn't right if beta is not positive and if beta is not between 0 and 90. Okay. 
All right, so now we have to use our calculator. So beta is equal to tan inverse of positive 7 over 24. Okay. And uh, it said round to the nearest hundredth, so I'm rounded to two decimals, so beta is approximately point, uh, 0 0.28 radians. Okay. Right. So we're just dealing with angles in the full number form and not in the pi form. Okay. All right, so that means theta 1 is going to be found by doing uh, pi minus beta. Um, so pi, remember, uh, is represented by 3.14 for rounding. Okay, so 3.14 minus 0.28. So we get our theta 1 is a radian value of 2.86 radians. Uh, theta 2 lands in quadrant 4. So we're going to find that by doing 2 pi minus beta. So 2 pi is 2 times 3.14. So that's 6.28 minus beta, which is 0.28. So that leaves us with 6. So the value of theta that satisfies this equation could be 2.86 or 6 radians. So two possible answers. Again, same four steps. All right, the next question, it says the terminal arm of an angle in standard form uh, passes, or standard position, sorry, passes through the point negative four, negative two. Find the radius of the triangle made with the x-axis and determine the exact value of the three primary trig ratios. Then find the radian measure of the angle to the nearest degree. So that was a lot of things that we have to find, okay? So let's do it step by step. Okay, uh, what's going to help us here the most is a visual. So let's draw an, uh, an angle that has the point negative 4, negative 2 on its terminal arm. So negative 4, negative 2, that's uh, going to land in quadrant uh, 3. Okay. So here in red, okay, I've kind of outlined it, it was there in blue as well, um, is our rotation from here to here. So our blue angle is landing in quadrant three. And notice it has this point here. Let me kind of make that a bit more clear. So this point here, okay, where the arm lands is negative four, negative two. Okay, so it's rotating around this way. This, make that one a bit lower. It's about negative two, about down here. Okay, so it goes negative four across, negative two down, and there's the end of the angle. Okay, so obviously what that means we know that beta is inside here. Okay. And I always want you to imagine within any angle you draw, um, you can draw the little uh, right triangle inside of it, okay, with the nearest x axis. So here's our right triangle in green. Um, I know that the x here is negative 4, because I went negative 4 over. I know the y here is negative 2, because I went 2 down. But what I don't know is the radius, so that's the first thing we have to find. So we're going to find r by using Pythagorean theorem. So we know that x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Okay. Right, the radius is always the hypotenuse. So we get r squared equals uh, negative 4 squared plus negative 2 squared. That's going to equal uh, 16 plus 4. So that's going to be r squared equals 20. And to get r on its own, we're going to square root both sides. Mathematically, that would mean that we uh, take plus or minus, but radius is a side length. Uh, radius is always positive as well. So radius um, and beta, if you want to just remember that, are always positive. So we know radius has to be root 20. Now, I want you to keep in mind, we should always be reducing our radicals. So this is a little flashback from last year. You always want to think, it, can the number under the radical sign be rewritten as the multiple of two factors where one of the factors is a perfect square? 20 can be rewritten as root 4 times root 5. And then we know root 4 is a perfect square, so root 4 equals 2. So root 20 should be written as 2 root 5. 
and the textbook will most likely write it that way. So I want to make sure that you don't panic and think you get the wrong answer when you look in the back. Um, they actually have the same value. All right, now that we have that, we can find the primary trig ratios because we have x, y, and r. So sine theta is always, right, y over r. So that's going to be negative 2 over 2 root 5. The negative 2 and 2 cancel out, so we're left with negative 1 over root 5. And then you want to rationalize the denominator. So you multiply top and bottom by root 5, and that gives you negative 5 over root, uh, sorry, negative root 5 over 5. All right, cos. Cos theta is equal to x over r. So that is negative 4 over 2 root 5. Negative 4 divided by 2 reduces to negative 2 over 1. So we get negative 2 over root 5. And rationalize the denominator, and you get negative 2 root 5 over 5. And lastly, uh, we get here that tan tan theta is equal to y over x, so that's negative 2 over negative 4, and that's positive 1 half. So I want you guys to notice the only ratio, if it's in quadrant 3, the only ratio that should be positive is tan. So I look back, tan is positive, and then sine and cos are negative. Perfect. Okay. Now we need to find beta. Uh, to find beta, you can use any one of these three ratios, sine, cos, or tan. I'm personally going to work with tan because tan is already positive. So I don't, excuse me, I don't have to worry about that rule. So I know tan beta is going to equal positive 1 over 2. When I do tan inverse of 1 over 2, I get approximately 0.46 radians. So that little uh, purple part here is 0.46. So how do I calculate theta? Well, I know I go 0.46 past pi, so theta is going to be pi plus beta. So that's 3.14 plus 0.46. So my final angle, angle measure is 3.6 radians, and that is it. So I know it looks like a lot of work, just do one step at a time, and it's really everything that you have seen or done before. Okay, so just a lot of practice. And our last question here, it says the needle of the compass makes an angle of four radians with the line pointing east from the center of the compass. The tip of the needle is 4.2 centimeters below the line pointing west from the center of the compass. How long is the needle to the nearest hundredth? All right, so let's do a drawing. Okay, so they told us that the needle of the compass makes an angle of four radians with the line pointing east. So they're just saying east is basically, um, if you set up your compass, northwest, east, south. So they're just saying, basically in code, they're saying an angle in standard position. Okay, so starting from the positive x-axis. Um, this one here is important to note that where four radians would lie. So you have to think to yourself, um, if this is 3.14 because it's pi, and we know 2 pi is 6.28, then you can find these values by doing 3.14 divided by 2 to get 1.57. And then you can do 3.14 plus... 1.57 to get the 4.71. Okay, so now you can see it in their uh, decimal form. So that means 4 radians is going to land in quadrant 3. Okay? It's going to be close to the 4.71 at the 3 pi over 2 line. So that's why I've drawn my blue angle there. Okay? It says that the tip of the needle is 4.2 centimeters below the line pointing west. So that's what I've drawn here in purple, this vertical line. So what we've created a right triangle, okay? And it's 4.2 um, centimeters below. So that means it has a Y value here of minus 4.2. All right, so this one's unique. We have an angle, we have one side, and um, they want us to know, they want us to figure out how long the needle is. 
So the needle is this part here in green. So basically what they're asking us for is to find the radius of the uh, triangle made with the x-axis. Okay, so they're asking us to find this guy here. In order to find this guy, I am going to need either another side length in the triangle or I'm going to need an angle measure. Because they gave us the full angle rotation, finding beta is going to be our best bet. So let's work with finding beta. So we know beta is equal to this angle measure okay, minus pi. Right? We want to know how much it went past. So theta minus pi, uh, they told us theta was 4, so 4 minus 3.14. Okay? And we get 0.86 um, rads. So this purple triangle here, I've kind of redrawn it for us. I've pulled it out of the diagram here so I could draw it bigger. So I know that little angle there is 0.86, and then I've got these side lengths here. Uh, now we're finding the radius using the primary trig ratios. Okay. So imagining this diagram here, um, keep in mind when you're solving for radius, um, it's okay to imagine the side length is positive um, because you know your radius can't produce a negative answer. Okay, so in this scenario, instead of in the diagram, we know it's minus 4.2. When pulling it out and just solving for R, you can just deal with the positive. Okay. So you're going to get sine 0.86. Okay, so if we use our diagram, this is going to be our opposite. Okay, this is our hypotenuse. So we get sine 0.86 is equal to 4.2 over R, cross multiply. So you get R times sine 0.86 equals 4.2. And then to get R on its own, you're going to divide sine 0.86 from both sides. This should give you an answer of 5.54 centimeters. And that is your final answer here. The needle is about 5.54 centimeters long. All right, I know that was a lot of information to take in. Um, try to take as much time as you can just going over the material um, step by step. If you have any questions, please let me know. And with this unit, practice is very, very key. Okay, um, good luck with the homework and let me know if you have any questions. Good luck, guys.